This webisode of Waterways is brought to you by Yamaha. Yamaha revs your heart. Boat Blurb, inspired boating content. Become a subscriber today. And St. Clair Boat Sales, turning boaters' dreams into reality. The temperature's rising and you're feeling the heat. Oh, you will want it to be. Summer, the summer, the summer of you. Do all the things you want to do. The summer, the summer, the summer of you. All your dreams. Hey, everybody, welcome to episode eight. The final episode of series one of Waterways, where we're going all over Ontario and here again with my buddy John Patterson. How are you? Man, good to see you. Good to see you, Steve. Good to be seen. <laughs> so you might be wondering why we're standing in front of this boat. Well, this is the latest addition to my fleet because the boat that you would have seen in the Toronto episode, the Welland Canal and Port Colborne is a 2001 Sea Ray 380 Sundancer. That's my boat and my family loves it. We spend most of our summer on it. But if I try to take it away for the second half of the summer to do series two shoots, I might not have a family to boat with next year. <laughs> so I was looking into what to do and I thought, well, let's reflect what the average boater in Canada does. And it's not 38, 40 plus foot boats on average. They're smaller, they're more affordable. So I limited the search to the price of, you know, call it a, a used SUV, about 25,000 Canadian, 20,000 US. And I found this beautifully kept 1994 Monterey conveniently listed by my buddy, John Patterson. So we're gonna talk about the process of buying a boat and what you should look for. But first, where are we, John? We are in probably one of the greatest places in the world, a place that nobody can get me out of, especially in the summer, not even for bar mitzvahs, family reunions, and certainly not weddings. Never gonna go during this time. This is a beautiful town, some of the greatest people, some of the best waterways, and conveniently, we have the United States of America, just a dinghy right away. And I am so grateful to be here. This is such a wonderful town, and I'm so happy that we're showcasing it for you. And uh, thanks for coming down. It's a hidden gem on the St. Clair River, which means we're talking about... I've had the good fortune of traveling all over North America, and I found the two people that consistently give you the real deal about a town are bartenders and real estate agents. <laughs> and I have one of them here, real estate agent, Peter Ayler, how are you, buddy? Good, good, how are you? Living the dream. So, Absolutely. Not only are you a real estate agent, own a real estate company here, you're local, born and raised. Absolutely, yes. I've been here my whole life. You wanna know something about this area? I'm the guy. I want to know <laughs> lots about this area. <laughs> Starting with, I've only been here a couple times and every time I get a bit of a Florida vibe. Is that just because I'm projecting because for two years I haven't been down there or is that no, legit? No, you're, you're getting the right vibe. I mean, it's, it's I call it the, the Key West of Southwestern Ontario. That's my tagline and, and it really is. It really gives you that feeling. As far as boating, it's unbelievably inviting. It's, it's in my opinion, I mean, and I've been different areas to lakes and stuff. In my opinion, this area, when it comes to boating, you can't beat it. So it's just a fantastic area to boat. I mean, you know, we have lots of other things around here as well, but definitely the boating of this area is second to none. One of the things people say to me all the time, how long has this been here, right? And I'm just like, well, quite a while. You know? According to the signs I saw on the streetlights since 1820. Yeah, right? exactly, yeah, you know, so, so it, it you know, it, it a lot of like, for example, and you know, not trying to say Grand Bend isn't a great area because it is, but you know, if you're a boater in Grand Bend, you know, one of the sayings is, Lake Huron tells you when you're going to boat. When you live here, you boat when you want to boat. I mean, right. if you decide tomorrow we're going boating, nine out of ten times you're going boating. You know, and it's uh, it's not like it's a big boating community, but it it also feels like. The, the right type of off the map, like a hidden gem, like it's not overwhelmed with visitors and, and boats coming through. Yeah, 100%, it is definitely, you know, you know, best kept secret because, you know, I, I, of course I sell to lots of different people, local people, out of town people, and over the last three to five years, the out of town crowd, you know, we've been discovered. 
honestly. We have been discovered. Local people say to me, like, shh, stop it, stop it, you know, <laughs> stop talking about us, you know. And it's true. Well, for I the mean, local yeah. story, I begged yeah, them to yeah, come yeah, on yeah, camera. Yeah. This isn't Pete, yeah, don't yeah, worry. Yeah, yeah, but it's true. Like, it's, it, 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 this is, right, this is the perfect spot to be because, you know, you're, you're right there. The St. Clair River is right there. The Sny is here. You know, if you want to do some cross border boating, you're talking half an hour from my house, a half an hour from my house, there's probably at least a half a dozen or more places you can go. You know, whether it be places to swim, whether it be places to have dinner. I mean, there's tons of spots. The, yeah. the variety is tremendous here. It's just tremendous. Right? Okay, well, I'm gonna cut you off because like any more and I'm gonna be buying a house. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> well, I Come appreciate your time. I'll I will. You one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very All much. Right. All right, well, now I gotta explore it by water because you've whet my appetite. So I'm gonna find John. I know he's busy, but yeah, I gotta go for a you, boat ride. You need to do that. Go for a boat ride. <laughs> I recommend Beautiful. it. Beautiful. Throat Series 1, you've seen my friend, Sergeant Dave Moffat, uh, helping out with some questions and safety tips. I uh, appreciate all your time. You're welcome, anytime. Before we end this series, though, I got one minute left. Can we try and squeeze in a lightning round here? Absolutely, fire away. All right. I'm ready. Starting the clock. Boom. Can I wear this type of PFD on a personal watercraft? Absolutely not. They are illegal to be worn. Oh. Do I need to be wearing a life jacket if I'm water skiing? You don't need a life jacket if you're water skiing. However, you do need one on board a vessel that's towing you. How many life jackets do I need on my boat? Does it depend on the size of the boat? Depends on the number of occupants you have, and they have to be proper fitting. Eight people, eight life jackets or PFDs, properly fitting. Those uh, kill switch, those red uh, toggle sort of lines, do I have to legally have that attached to me at all times? Not in Canada, but it's a very good practice to make sure that that kill switch is active. Can I use a personal watercraft to tow my kids on a tube or something like that? You can, but you remember, you have to have seating for the operator, for the spotter, and for the people you're towing. So uh, as I know, there's only three person PWCs out there. Can I uh, go on a stand-up paddleboard without a life jacket? You can, you'll be charged. But um, remember, if, if the vessel's being used for navigation, then you need a life jacket. Boom, one minute on the nose, nailed it. So that answers a lot of the safety questions around boating, but what about diversity and representation? Is everyone that boats a white dude? Well, historically, it has been dominated by people that look like me, but there are people like my friend Avery that are trying to change that. My name is Avery Rose Bonin, and I started making YouTube videos as a way to inspire more kids, uh, especially girls and uh, young women, to get out fishing. Drag, good girl. Dad, get him. You got him? Is he still there? So I started fishing when I was about seven days old. I didn't actually have a rod in my hand, but my dad took me out in the stroller. And uh, from there on, he would strap me on uh, his back and stomach. You got him. I got him. You got him? Ah, he's a fishy. You want me to grab him? Yeah, you grab him. There you go. Ah, he's a baby. And eventually, when I was like, Two or three, I started using an actual reel and rod. Uh, not a push button rod, though. Most people give their children push button rods, but my dad gave me an ice fishing rod, and uh, uh, that's how I really got into the sport. Fishing is really in my blood because my great grandfather that lived in Nova Scotia was a big fisherman, and it passed down from him to my grandpa and to my dad, and now to me, and it's like, always been there. So I started making fishing videos when I was around 11. Um, my dad films and edits almost all of my content. Um, so basically, he is a videographer and we thought we would make these videos just for fun, uh, just out of um, our passion for the sport. Uh, but eventually it grew into a little bit more. I've got uh, a pretty decent sized following now and eventually Belle reached out to us and uh, I started my TV show Hooked a few years ago. I'm 15 now, uh, turning 16, and my love for the sport has just grown through creating content uh, for kids and adults alike. And the show is on Belle in Canada and it's all across the US on the World Fishing Network, as well as being on the Sportsman channel. And of course, always remember to take a kid fishing. See you later. 
It is also very important to me uh, as I've gotten older to introduce more women and girls into the sport. Uh, fishing and boating is predominantly male dominated sports. And uh, I think it's super important that women know that girls can fish too. Girls can get behind the wheel of a boat. I've been driving a boat since I was 10 years old. I just introduced my little sister. Uh, she got her first ever boat and uh, she is learning to drive as well. I think it's important for girls and women to get into the sport, if, especially if they haven't really had the chance to be exposed to it. And I think they shouldn't be intimidated by the fact that there isn't a whole lot of women out there doing it and they should get out and try it themselves. If you're interested and want to learn more about boating and uh, being out on the lake, if you see me, do not be shy to say hi, ask questions, ask for help. The boating community is an incredible one and uh, you would be lucky to be a part of it. Steve, I know you're a good boater, but I've seen your attempts at fishing and I suggest you come on down to Lake Erie. Uh, I'll show you a thing or two and we can have a great time on the water. <gasps> Avery. We all see it. We're just not supposed to say it. But you're on, buddy. Let's do this thing. Series two, the hooked and waterways crossover that no one knew was coming, but we all wanted. And yes, there will be a series two. And I'll see you on Lake Erie, Avery. Even looking at the signs in Port Lambton, you see the anchors. You know this is a waterfront town. And waterfront towns are often full of boaters. But how do you get into the boating world? What should you do if you're looking for your first used boat? Talk me through it. You're, someone's coming to look at a boat. Yep. Let's use this one. Um, what are they looking for at first? OK, we're through doing a quick walk around. As you can tell, the boat right now probably needs a wax. I don't see any major damage or anything to the boat or scratches or anything, just a few little decals. Cleats, for example, you know, right in here, you can tell that there's no rust or corrosion or anything. So this is a great indication right there that the boat has not been in salt water. I'll show you another indication as well. If you come along to the back of the boat and you look under the swim platform, this is a big tip, uh, what I learned. So if you see here along the, uh, the cleats here and the trim tabs, all the bolts, if you don't see any rust or, or any uh, corrosion, then you know that the boat has been in fresh water. And you, you come around here, you look at the drive, uh, skeg is, is good, uh, no real corrosion on the drive, just needs to be painted. Little chip here on the, uh, on the prop, I'd probably take, take that off and get it uh, rehoned a little bit, but it's not going to be a huge damage or anything. Looking at the uh, anodes as well, they look good. Uh, drive is tight, you know, as you can tell right here when you shake it, you know, that's an indication that, that the gimbals have been tightened or, or redone, so that's a great great um, indication so if you were to take the drive and you got a lot of play when you take the boat out it's going to start to vibrate and it, that's going to need to get uh, either replaced or tightened up if it needs to get replaced in for replaced oof can be some some big money there you don't see any any other major issues a couple of scratches but from what i can see on the hull this is a solid boat all right, now that we're on the boat, what are we looking at? Okay, so we're on the boat here. We're looking around. Obviously, we're looking at the upholstery, for example. See that, that there is, you know, obviously some tape that's been covered up here. Tape as well, so a little bit of rip, which is, it is what it is. And stuff uh, like that is cosmetic, too, Cosmetic, right? like cosmetic, cosmetic. That's it, just strictly cosmetic. So it depends how you want to be. Uh, the bimini top here, for example, it's it's in not bad shape. It's, there's no rips or tears or anything in it. As you're at the helm here, you see a nice, nice clear gauges. Obviously, when we get to the water test, you want to test everything. Does the horn work, lights, panel, everything's working. Everything's got to work. So what we're looking for right here, we know right now it's a, it's a little dirty, but you know what? It's got a, it's got a really big uh, axe. I mean, this, this uh, engine compartment is pretty good for service. So right here, uh, this is your uh, gear lube, the uh, lube for the, uh, the stern drive. It's, it is, you know, it's about half full. You want to make sure it's, it's nice and topped up. You want to check the oil as well. And as we can see here, it's full, clear. So that's a, a good indication. Uh, I want to make sure that there's no oil or anything in, in the bilge that we were talking about, that the belts are nice and tight. Uh, you don't want to make sure, you want to make sure that, that there's no, you know, major rust around any of the bolts or the fittings. See how nice and uh, there's no corrosion or any, um, rust around them at all. I know I keep talking about that, but that's a big indication. That's a big deal. Uh, so this is also, to me, a, 
freshwater boat. So, okay guys, now we're gonna go down to the cabin. Let's uh, check it out. Follow me. Now here we are in the cabin. And before we go into it, I just want you to know that this boat is a 1994. So if you are not, you know, currently up to date or happy with the cosmetics of the boat, this can all be changed. If you want to have it replaced or you're not into the... What's wrong with the dusty rose? <laughs> I don't know, it's not bad. But here we are in the cabin and we're, we're looking around. And, you know, first of all, it, it doesn't have a bad smell to it, which is good. You, if, if it has a bad odor, then you're in, you know, there could be some, some issues there. So you want to make sure, but this particular boat does not, which is nice. It's got the aft cabin. We're looking around. There's no major stains or anything around any of the hatches or portholes or anything. So shows a good indication that it is a, a dry boat that the deck more than likely is, is good, is sound. So that's a great indication. Uh, obviously on water test, we're gonna have everything hooked up to power, check the fridges, check everything at, at the breaker here. So your cabin lights, fridge, water pump, stereo, sub pump, television, everything. You wanna make sure that everything is working. You wanna test the head as well, make sure it's holding water, that it's flushing. Um, after you turn it on, if it is a vacuum flush, you hear that and it goes for a long time, indication that the duck bills uh, will have to be replaced. So um, yeah, it, it's, it's from what I can see, this is a, a very good boat, uh, especially for the year. You just want to make sure you want to bring your wife or your partner down or the kid just to make sure that this layout is going to work for you. Because at the end of the day, there's a lot of boats out there. There's a lot of models. But if you like the boat, you just want to make sure, okay, we could spend our time here. It's going to be comfortable. There's enough room at the galley to prepare a meal. Uh, the head is a good size. We can get, you know, Jenny and Tim down, the little kids down in the cabin, in the aft cabin. That's going to work. Mom and dad in the front. Also, what you want to do too is... Uh, you want to make sure that that fridge is working. Make sure you turn it on and run it because to replace some of these fridges is going to be up to $1,500 for the marine fridge. So that's also a, a big deal too. So just check everything. Be very thorough. Take your time. Don't feel rushed. Don't feel pressured. If you have to come back another day as well, do it. Um, you know, you're spending a lot of money and you want to get the boat that, that's going to be best for you and your family. So you want to make sure that everything's working. As long as you know it's not a rotten boat, everything's working and hopefully it can be a freshwater boat. You got a, a great boat and, and have fun. It doesn't have to be a 2022 or a 21 or a million dollar boat. At the end of the day, we're all on the water. We're all having fun, doing exactly what we love to do and that's boating. So it's the greatest pastime and brings families together. And I mean, yeah, who, who doesn't love boating, so. As I'm reviewing episode eight, the final segment, I'm calling an audible. I'm changing that segment out because there's a question I've been asked at just about every marina I visited this summer. I get it on social media and I just got another email. What are your former boating buddies up to? So I'll have them answer. I'll use this non-trademarked video chat service. Call Mike Gridley and we'll ask him directly. Hey, Steve. So what are you up to now, buddy? Needed a project to keep busy. So here's the project. This is the 1972 Checkmate MX-15 that I found abandoned in Havelock. It was full of snow, full of leaves, pine needles, water. It was a mess. If it was wood, it was rotten. So deck off in a complete gut for this particular boat. And what we decided to do with this boat, or I decided, was to do what's called a restored and modified resto mod, not make it look exactly like it did in 72. But I built a boat that has all modern equipment in it, except for the shifter control and power. And what the power is here that I'm still fine tuning to get it working right, is a 1982 Mercury Tower Power, they call them. It's an inline six, 115 horsepower. 10 layers of candy apple wine, it's called, not, uh, not candy apple red. This is a wine burgundy color multiple layers of clear and then of course with the metal flake in it so no matter how you look at this boat it glitters and changes colors in the sun so that's been my project for better part of uh, three years she's now done ready for the water for a final tune-up on the motor and go have some fun so very cool i look forward to a ride later my friend talk to you later it's been great talking to you call john bleacher Hey, Steve, what's going on? That's personal, and I'll thank you for staying out of my business, but what are you up to? Well, <laughs> we sold the house, and we bought a sailboat. Whoa. And uh, next year, we're planning to make a run for the Caribbean. Sweet. This is our uh, 2012 Beneteau Oceanus 48, and it's a freshwater boat. Let me give you a quick tour. Check this out. This, Sherry. Hi, Steve. Hope you can join us. Hey, Sherry. Oh, I'd love to. This is our little cockpit. It is... Uh, it's a big boat, man. 
It's got a 15 foot, seven inch beam. Came a little dingy, but uh, check out the space down below. These are sailboats, man. One day we got to get you sailing. Look at this. There's our salon and our galley. For, uh, it's a three stateroom, two head boat. Aft cabin number one, the starboard, aft cabin number two, to port. Our day head, which it shared with the starboard, is pretty big and nice thing, dedicated shower. So it's a dry head, it's got its own door. And then forward, we have a queen island in the master which is super bonus, not climbing over each other. And the 48 is pretty cool. The shower and the sink are separated from the master head. So master head to port, right? So if everyone needs the head, you can still have a shower. <laughs> pretty cool, eh? So the question for you, when you come in sailing, <laughs> we got to take you for a sail, man. All right, buddy. Later, pal. Great talking to you. Cheers, brother. All right. Question answered. New people met. Safety solutions. Uh, adventures all over the province of Ontario. Series two is going to be underway almost immediately. There's no rest for the wicked awesome, as they always say. Uh, so hit us up on social media and online. And if you see me at a marina, Stop me, talk to me. I want to know your ideas, suggestions, and tips. That's where a lot of the content for Series 1 came from. And I look forward to telling even more amazing stories on, in, and around the water for Series 2 of Waterways. Thank you so much for your support and for watching. I'll see you on the water. Be safe. I love it here so much. So I'm considering, gonna, uh, as a boat broker, never going to stop that, but also running for mayor or deputy mayor. So the mayors out there in the city, watch out because I'm going to be coming for you because this is the greatest city ever, and I'd love it. See that? We got breaking political <laughs> news on waterways, too. <laughs> My goodness. Yes. Put you on the spot. Yes, you did.